day. Ham hocks, turkey, potato salad, some donuts, some fruit, cookies, sweets, and nice hot coffee to wash it down. Nothing like a nice little refreshment for the train trip. How long are you girls going to be down in Nashville? Just long enough to see our sweet sister Linda Jo safely married. Well, well, she finally nabbed somebody, huh? I'm surprised. Leave that alone, Montgomery. On the train, I want something left to keep my feet warm. <laughs> Montgomery, are you going to miss me? Every minute you're away, Maggie Bell, it's going to be torture for me. <laughs> I'm begging you not to go. I'm so happy you feel that way. I wish I could figure out some way to make you stay. <laughs> I'm going to be so lonely. I never knew you felt this way. Oh, I do, I do. If I hadn't gotten dehydrated down at the Turkish bath, I'd be crying my eyes out. <laughs> Don't forget your suitcases. Huh? took that red hot engine off his neck. <laughs> Walk me back to my house, will you, Calvin? Mm, 11.30. I got $50, Maggie Bell, left me in an envelope. And I have to give it to the landlord at noon, or he'll lock us out of our place. He is a... Hey, look there on the curb. A woman's pocketbook. I'll get the thing before someone else sees it. <laughs> Excuse me, old chap. I do believe I saw that pocketbook first. Oh, I, I uh, didn't see you there, but uh, I do believe I saw it first. My friend here, 2020 Vision Burnside, will testify to that. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Now, see here. All I'm interested in is to find the rightful owner of the pocketbook. I think the first step is to open it and see if we can find some clue to his ownership. Yeah, I was afraid of that. Well, uh, let me see in here. Wow! Yes, <laughs> I wager there's four five hundred dollars in there. Well, too bad there's no name and address in there. We're just going to have to split it. <laughs> just a moment, old chap, but there are some credentials in there. Well, we'll split them, too. Uh, uh, come on. Uh, I mean identification. Oh, jolly good. The pocketbook belongs to a, a Mrs. Herbert Terwilliger, 2432 Lakeview Terrace. Uh, telephone number here, too. Uh, uh, what say I pop in and give her a buzz from the apothecary? Well, uh, there isn't too much time. Uh, why don't you go in the drugstore here and call her on the phone? <laughs> exactly what I had in mind. We might catch her in a uh, 
gratuitous mood. Uh, yeah, sir. Is that good or bad? Sounds a little on the naughty side. I mean, she might offer a reward. Oh, yes, a reward. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Get on the phone. And I'll be right back, old biscuit. Yeah, hurry up, old cracker crumb. <laughs> <laughs> Peculiar accent the fella had, huh, Calvin? Yeah, he didn't seem to have a good grip on the English language, did he? <laughs> He's some kind of a foreigner. Let's watch him through the window. Ah, he's in the phone booth. He's talking to someone on the telephone now, see? Yeah, I bet it's Mrs. Terwilliger. Yeah, that's who it is, Mrs. Terwilliger. I hope he caught her in a gratuitous mood. Here he comes, here he comes. Well, I got to Mrs. Terwilliger. She was simply overwhelmed. Yeah, well, in round figures, just how much was she overwhelmed? She said she's coming over and has a hundred dollars reward for us. A hundred dollar reward? Yes, and inasmuch as we found the pocketbook together, I thought we might split the reward 50-50. How does that set with you? Well, it squats with me pretty good. <laughs> yes, I think that's fair. I do hope Mrs. Terwilliger hurries, though. Why, are you in a hurry to get someplace, mister? Yes, I have a rather important meeting in my office. I strongly dislike keeping my solicitor waiting. Well, if you're in a hurry, sir, uh, you can give us the pocketbook and we'll be glad to... No, I shan't want to miss out on my share of the reward. Oh, shan't you now? No, after all, when Mrs. Terwilliger gets here, she might decide to extend her generosity further. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Now look, mister, if you were in a hurry, I got 50 bucks here. I could give you your share of the reward. And then when Mrs. Terwilliger got here and wants to extend her generosity, we could get in touch with you later and all that stuff. <laughs> you know. Well, I guess that would be all right. You'll, you'll surely wait for Mrs. Terwilliger. Oh, surely. Yes, there you are, sir. 30, 40, 50 bucks. There you are. Well, thank you. Now I shan't have to keep my solicitor waiting. To old Bean. Yeah, and a few beans to you, too. <laughs> Calvin, it's ten minutes to twelve. Now all we have to do is to wait for Mrs. Terwilliger to arrive and extend her generosity. <laughs> hmm, Colonel, it's a quarter after seven. Do you think Mrs. Terwilliger and her generosity are ever going to show up? Well, I can't understand what happened, Calvin. Seven hours ago, old Biscuit Head said that she'd pop right over. Yeah, Colonel, I've got a funny feeling. You think maybe you ought to do a little purse peeking and see if that $500 is all right? See if the moss got at it or something like that? <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea, Calvin. I'll open it under my coat. And you can kind of look in there. I can't see anything. It's too dark in there. Well, light a match then. Now, can you see? Yes, and unless they're making money out of watered silk, there's nothing in this pocketbook but a lining. Let me see. <laughs> oh, Calvin. This is terrible. It's empty. We've been gypped. I've lost the rent money. Oh, Calvin, what am I going to do? Take it easy, Colonel. I'll pop into the apothecary and get us both an aspirin. It sure is nice of you to stick with me and give me moral support, Calvin, because I'm really down in the dumps. Sure is a mess, isn't it, Colonel? 
Yes, I telephoned police headquarters and I talked to a man named Sergeant Graham. He says that the lost press gimmick is nothing but a confidence game. To think that I, Colonel Montgomery J. Claxton, would be taken in by a Yankee with a foreign accent. <laughs> yeah, and that money was for the landlord. You don't suppose your landlord would come up here and think, uh, Colonel, look at your apartment door. Oh, me, Calvin. Maggie Bell and Sister Sue will be back Monday from Nashville. Calvin, what in the world am I going to do when those two grizzlies get home and find they're going to have to be hibernating in a flop house? <laughs> I've got to get some money to pay the landlord. I've got to get it. <laughs> $50 for the rent. Tell you what, let's pull the old gimmick ourselves and double our money. Well, now, wait a minute. We're liable to get in trouble. How could we get in trouble doubling our money? We've got the pocketbook. All we have to do is to find the sucker. Yeah, but are you sure you have the gimmick straight? Certainly, Calvin. I've got it in my mind step by step. The pocketbook, the phone call, Mrs. DeWilliger, and everything. Now, come on, let's go. And now watch this. Uh-oh, here comes the fellow. He doesn't look like we ought to have much trouble with him. Yeah, look at him there. Go to work, Colonel. Oh, excuse me, old chap, but I believe I saw that pocketbook first. 
Uh, you talking to me? I said I believe I saw the pocketbook first. What pocketbook? The one lying right there. I don't see any pocketbook. Of course you did. You saw it lying there. Oh, I did? <laughs> Excuse me for intruding here. I happen to be an innocent bystander. I think you both saw the pocketbook at the same time. Uh, certainly. Now then, the first thing to do is to open the pocketbook and see if we can find some clue to the rightful owner. <laughs> yeah, that's the right thing to do, all right, stranger. Well, how do you like that? Must be four or five hundred dollars in there. You saw it with your own eyes, didn't you, sir? Jeepers. It did look like a lot of money. Yes, and while I was looking in there, I saw it belonged to a Mrs. Herbert Terwilliger. 2432 Lakeview Terrace. I saw her phone number in there, too. I saw it, too. Uh, uh, I'll bet if we took the pocketbook over to her, she'd be glad to get it back. Oh, yeah, we could take it. Uh, 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 wait a minute, sir. Uh, that's not the way it works. <laughs> now, right now is where I pop into the apothecary and call up Mrs. Terwilliger. Yeah, you catch her in a gratuitous mood. <laughs> Well, whatever you say. Uh, certainly, sir. Now, this total stranger, Mr. Burnside, here, and I will go into the drugstore and call her up. He might offer us a reward. Reward? Oh, boy. <laughs> yes, now you wait here, sir. Come on, Calvin. out there, Colonel. We really got a dodo with this bird. Yeah, he isn't even watching us. Oh, this is like taking candy from a baby. Come on, let's go back. Oh, you're back, Sir Jones? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Mrs. Terwilliger said that she's coming right over. She's really happy, all right. She said she's going to bring us a hundred dollar reward just for us. A hundred dollars? Oh, that's key. <laughs> Say, uh, by the way, don't you have to go someplace? Go someplace? Yeah, don't you have to meet your solicitor or something? Oh, no, no. I'm going to stay right here until that Mrs. Terwilliger gets here with my share of the reward. Oh, well, if that's all that's holding you up, old biscuit head, I'll be glad to advance you your share out of the pocketbook here. After all, it's Mrs. Terwilliger's money. Ha, ha, ha. Hey, look, uh, you think this is the right thing to do? Certainly it is. Now, there you are, 10, 20, 30, 40, and 10. Fifty dollars. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, nice meeting you. Goodbye. <laughs> Tell me, uh, did this thing work out all right, Colonel? <laughs> <laughs> certainly, Calvin, certainly. Hmm. You see, he went off with our 50 bucks. So we end up with a total of $100. Yeah, but if we only have 50 bucks in the pocketbook, where do we get the other 100 bucks? Where do we get it? We just wait here until Mrs. Terwilliger brings it to us. <laughs> the thing to do is just wait. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I'm not in the land of cotton. Just look here, boy, at what we've got. And look here. <laughs> look here. <laughs> look here, Calvin boy. <laughs> hey, uh, by the way, Lakeview Terrace is only around the block. She's taking a long time getting here. Colonel. Seems like she took a long time getting here the last time, too. <laughs> Listen, you numbskull, what are you talking about, the last time? The trick is that there isn't any Mrs. Terwilliger. Don't you realize she's a fictitious character? Uh, well, if she's a fictitious character, what are we doing here waiting for? <laughs> well, you see, Calvin, the gimmick is... Y you see, the thing... Uh, I mean, about... Uh, be, about... Uh, uh, about... <laughs> 
you know something, Calvin? We have been swindled. That fellow's a crook. <laughs> Drums have suffered enough for one day. <laughs> Those two sour old females are going to fly back from Nashville on the next plane. Oh, I'm really in a mess here. Yeah, I'd suggest you go throw yourself under a cross-town bus, but we don't know the bus schedule. <laughs> well, you know something, Calvin? Us Claxons of the old house never gave up if there was a fighting chance. I got a few hours to get everything straightened out, so I'm going to hock my granddaddy's gold watch and try that pocketbook gimmick again. But, Colonel... No, I've got the gimmick memorized good this time, Calvin. I've been going through it in my mind, and I'll guarantee you I just can't make any mistakes. Come on, Calvin, it's my last chance. <laughs> pocketbook first. Oh, you did. And I suppose now you'll call Mrs. Terwilliger and you'll wait here for the reward. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, uh, say, uh, uh, wait a minute, mister. How did you know all these things? How did I know? You're the guy we had all the complaints on. Come with me. I'm Detective Sergeant Graham of the police department. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 